Hey, what's up, guys? It's JKK Tag, and today we're going to be bringing to you the last of my CCGS decks. This is my giant double minions, miner, fireball, and zap deck. I've been liking this a lot in GCs and competitive play, and it works pretty well. This deck is essentially a poison bait deck with the Night Witch, the minions, and the minion horde really baiting out the poison from your opponent. When you stagger your units, your opponent will have a very tough time deciding when and where to use their poison. Fireball and Zap are in this deck because they are immediate spells and they are able to reliably clean up a lot more of the distraction units, enabling you to get your minion horde and your minions on top of your opponent's tower a lot easier. For example guys, the Fireball will deal with an Electro Wizard a lot faster than a Poison would. So Zap allows me to play Reactionary, while Log, I have to go in for immediate Prediction Log if I have any hopes of hitting a Goblin Gang. So when your primary objective of your supporting units is to get to the tower with a Bandit and the minions, you really have to synergize them around reliable spells like a zap and a fireball to make sure that they can get there a lot easier. So guys, I have a GC running right now, and I've been liking this deck a lot in GCs and competitive play. Let's jump straight into the GC, guys. All right, guys, we got a game against Zack Attack from Savage Bros. All right, this guy's a certified Savage. He's even proclaiming it in his clan description. All right, man. He's an attacker. That's his name, and then he's also a Savage, so I gotta, I gotta get ready. I don't know if my body's prepared for this. Oh my god, the Leap Barbarian's at the bridge. This guy is definitely a savage. I, I can't take this. The IQ level is unprecedented right now. It is unfathomable. I, I can't... Oh, the Harry Potter as well. Guys, I, I can't believe this. This guy. Never before seen. This is unreal, guys. I, I, I It's truly ineffable. I'm going to be dropping the Fireball, trying to hit everything. I end up hitting the Hog Rider. I end up actually hitting the Wizard, the Harry Potter as well. We're doing pretty well right now. I'm liking our situation. All right. So the clock is reset. Everything's back to normal. What's happening, dude? I am down a little bit, but I think I'm up a little bit of elixir. So he's going to be pumping up. All right. So unfortunately for us, our giant is not an immediate pressure on him right now. It's put in the back, so I have to wait for that to actually be uh, closer to the bridge for me to actually facilitate a minor push. Because what I want to do is I want to have the double threat at the exact same time. So then he has to allocate resources to both both threats. He has to allocate Elixir to defending this giant. And he also has to defend the miner. He's not even going to try to defend the miner. The miner is actually just going to be tanking for the minions. And it's looking really good for me right now. We're going to be dropping the horde. And we're also going to be zapping his horde so that we make sure my horde wins. Looks like he's just he's dropping a Harry Potter. He kind of just let the, left, or the right lane go. I don't really understand the premise behind that or what his thought process is. But I mean, something. Sometimes you can't really explain. Uh, you can't really explain savage plays. It's going in for a rage as well. All right, I, 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 I don't know, guys. I'm at a loss of words. This man is. He's he's crazy. He's a wild one. I've never seen a species like this before. We're gonna be dropping a giant, and his princess will lock under a giant, and then we should be able to actually go in for a minion horde, maybe. I don't really know because he's got he's got Harry Potter, right? We're gonna go for a minion horde right off to the side, then we're gonna go for a bandit, then we're gonna go for a miner. We're gonna lose that tower for sure, guys, but we gotta make sure that we get something out of it right now. Our giant is gonna get on the tower that Santa Claus is pulling through right now. One more hit. Alright, alright, we're taking it. That's okay. We're all good vibes right now. Oh dude, you need to stop with those elite barbs. We do not take kindly to that. Dropping the Night Witch right on top of the Harry Potter. Harry Potter is going to end up dying. Hopefully, guys, I, I think I might have cursed myself. He did not die right there. But that is Fireball range. So it is not It's not too bad for us. We can end up Fireballing it. We're going for the, for the Fireball, the closest possible tile to the tower. And this man has Hog Rider Golem. He has Hog Rider Golem Harry Potter. <laughs> Zack Attack, good game, man. You are truly a savage in my eyes. All right, guys, we got a game against Young Buck from Cali Trigger. See, I really dislike when people alternate caps in their names, especially in clan names. I feel like it looks very unprofessional. It's very, like, childish. So if it's not, as long as it's not a competitive clan, I'm fine with it. But, like, that's just, it's, it's triggering. It's triggering at a spiritual and emotional level right now, guys. However, he does have P.E.K.K.A. We will be able to showcase how to beat P.E.K.K.A. in this matchup, hopefully. Hopefully, I end up beating the P.E.K.K.A. This man, oh, this guy is definitely something special. He's just not really doing anything about units. He's just letting them roll. That's very obnoxious as well. So I'm going to end up having to zap that, and I'm also going to have to sauce out a Night Witch. So he's got Goblin Barrel, full aggression with this deck. I don't really understand it at all, but he's got a P.E.K.K.A. 
So maybe that's why we're playing against them. Young Buck, Young Savage, we see you. We see you. Caught Cali Trigger. You are triggering me a little bit with that. He, I think his I think his motivation with that name is to trigger me, so then it distracts me. I think he's a little bit accomplished in it, but you know, we can't let him win this battle. Gonna be dropping the bandit. Then it will end up distracting those minions for quite a while. And he's going to be dropping the, <laughs> the P.E.K.K.A. in the opposite lane. Alright, so because he drops the P.E.K.K.A., even though he's going to be up 3 Elixir, judging by the time he placed it, we were at 7 Elixir, so therefore he had to be up 3. Uh, I'm still going to be pressuring opposite lane. Because I really don't have anything to play into the P.E.K.K.A. besides a minion horde, and I want him to be as low amount of Elixir as possible. Also, he didn't really have an adequate defense in my last push. We're going to let that tower go, and we're going to have a really massive counter push in the right-hand lane. And honestly, looking like a three crown potentially as well. He's just letting those minions go to town on the tower, and that's going to be a three crown. Young Buck is taken down, guys. Let's move on to the next game. That was pretty whack. All right, guys, we got a game against Air Jordan, so you already know he's going to be trying to make some dunks on us. But, you know, we, we don't take kindly to those maneuvers. We're just going to wait and see what he does. We're not going to be dropping a bandit immediately. We're going to drop it at 10 elixir. There we go. And now we're going to be pressuring with a miner. So he ha he doesn't have that much elixir to respond. So he's going to be responding with a battle ram. That means that his, his deck is probably very offensive. And it's probably going to be a three musketeer deck. Could also be that golem 5.0. Really ridiculous three musketeer golem deck with minion horde and all these other interesting cards that really just don't seem to fit very well with golem. But it works out anyways. So he could have that deck, but we're going to wait and see what he has before making any huge assumptions like that. So, Saucy out of Minor, it's definitely not the Golem deck, it's probably going to be Three Musketeers. Or it could just be something really, really odd. So we're going to be dropping Nightwish in the back behind our behind our tank, and a whole bunch of the... Okay, that's really good for us. We're going to be zapping and fireballing, holding everything in place. Fireball comes down, and we kill all the muskies. Had to pull the trigger, guys, and we got rewarded for it really well right there. Making moves, making plays on Air Jordan. He's about to get dunked on, guys. Minions are coming in behind our giant, and he doesn't really have anything to deal with. He's going in for the zap, but the zap does not matter. The tower is taken. Dominance is being asserted all over him. And it's looking clean, guys. It's looking clean. So we're going to be dropping a bandit in the back. I'm pretty ready for him to just go pump up. If he pumps up, then I actually have the ability to punish him. And that's going to be interesting to see if he does it. All right, so he pumps up. He's down Elixir when he pumps up because he obviously, like, we dropped the Giant in the back. He still wasn't dropping anything. Therefore, when I was at 10 Elixir, he wasn't even close to full. And now we're in a really, really advantageous situation. We're going to be fireballing to keep our Giant alive for a little bit longer because both of the towers are targeting the Giant. It allows me to actually get a little bit more value out of my Bandit right there. And the Bandit almost ends up taking the tower. So I'm ready for his three musketeers. I'm not too scared. So he's going to be dropping his three musketeers. I'm going to be pressuring the lane of the one musky. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to build up a push with my giant. And then I'm going to be trying to either go for a fireball, which I probably will in this instance. I'm going to go for a fireball and just knock back those two muskies. And what that does right there is it allows my tower just to clean them up in one hit. I don't really have to deal with them at all. Now I can use zap and dedicate that to the minion horde and the musketeer in the left hand lane. And I'm feeling pretty good, guys. I, I feel like there's not too much to worry about in this situation. I'm staggering my minions so they all don't get hit by a zap. And Air Jordan, I mean, dude, uh, I, I feel like I feel like you're just not going to hit a tower, dude. You're hitting nothing but air. All right. Um, we're going to be going in for a fireball. We're going to go in for another zap combination right there, knocking everything out. And, uh, guys, this is looking like it could even be a three crown. And it's 760 HP still on his tower. Oh, man. One second left. One second left and Air Jordan was saved by the bell right there, guys. Let's move on to the next game. All right, guys, we got another game against someone from Ice Climber. All right, man. So I guess he's one of the Ice Climbers in Super Smash Bros. Melee or something. That's my best guess. All right, so we're going to be dropping a Night Witch in the back. It's a very advantageous play at the start. I don't really want to be cycling my Miner. Night Witch will actually get some value in it. It will dictate a response. Miner, he could actually just spam opposite lane or drop down a pump, and I could be in a really bad situation then. Going to be going in for a zap, and I miss one of the bats right there. That's not really something that I want to be starting off my game with. But I still ended up hitting the knight in the tower, so that was decent. Wait and see what he does. So he has an XE. All right, this guy, he's one of them. He is one of them, guys. He's going to be dropping a miner as well. So he just used two of his cards. That's eight elixir right there. And he should be scared because he doesn't have the executioner in hand to deal with this big push. 
He has the Nano, but he doesn't have the Executioner. And he's going to get punished dearly for that. He also has Zap, but guess what, guys? Now he doesn't have Zap for the Bats. We're going to be Zapping to keep that one Bat alive. And we got the Bat Miner Push coming in on the right-hand lane. And it is doing a lot of damage, guys. That is a massive tally right there. Totaling almost 1,000 damage. That's insane. Looking clean. Looking clean for us right now. All right. So, honestly, I'm just ready to... I'm trying to bait out the Executioner like I did earlier, and I, I don't really know if we're going to get it. So, yeah, he's, he's... We did get it, but we didn't really get what we wanted. We're just going to let that Giant do what it's supposed to do. It's just going to be tanking that. That Balloon will get to the tower. It's going to get one hit, and we're going to try to counter push with the Giant. We're going to try to make something happen. He's got a Knight down, but the Knight really won't do too much. We're going to be zapping all those Bats, and the Giant Minor push right now for us. It's going to do so much damage. Might even take the tower. It is looking very good for us at the moment. Looking great. Alright, so that knight is actually going to get a few hits. I don't know if I want to dedicate any elixir to defend that. I guess I'm going to sauce out minions. It might still get a hit, but uh, yeah, it ended up getting one hit. That was pretty bad of me. We're going to be fireballing that immediately. We're going to drop the knight witch. The fireball even hits the ice sphere, guys. So that was extremely clutch. The bats are coming in, and the bats do not end up stopping. So that was a misplay by me. Should have dropped it a little bit earlier. However, I'm going to be going in for a giant. I'm going to be going for a bandit to block the miner. I knew that it, that was the most, uh, that was, that's the most predictable spot for miners. So if you guys want to guess where a miner should be going, it should either be going there or in the back right there. So yeah, he ended up going there. <laughs> right as I thought, right as I thought, guys. So now we're going to be going for a night witch right now. And we're going to be going in for another miner. We're going for a miner in front of the tower to block an executioner or even kill it potentially. Going in for a fireball as well, zapping it. Oh man, this is looking really close for us. It's going to be dropping an Ice Spirit. We're going to go in for a Giant to tank for the Ice Spirit because he's going to go in for an Ice Spirit zap on those minions. Not really about that life of letting that happen to us. We're going to be dropping a Bandit off to the side. We're dropping a Miner off to the side. We're trying to not really group up our units. We're doing that very well right now. We're going to go in for a Fireball, trying to take out the Executioner, and it ends up going down and the Giant gets one hit. Santa Claus is pulling through for us right now, guys. It's not Christmas, but uh, he's fulfilling our wishes. All right, so we're going to be dropping Giant off to the side. Then we're going to be dropping our Minion Horde again. It's, it's just a considerable... It's it's probably the best thing for us to do against an Executioner. In case he opted to go for a Prediction Executioner, as he very well could have. We're going to go for a Bandit again. And that Bandit should get another dash, maybe? Oh, it doesn't. Very, very close in that situation. Giant didn't even get a last hit. So we're going to be dropping minions off to the side. We're going to be dropping Night Witch. We're going to be fireballing again. We need to get that fireball damage, guys. Fireball is coming through. That is not going to get through for him. That is looking good. Going for a giant in the middle to tank for all of our bats and everything. We're going to be going in for a miner. Our units are separate right now. And it looks like we're getting a lot of damage. The miner is coming in. We need to get one more fireball and the game is ours. Or a giant hit. Come on, giant. Let's go, guys. We just beat a counter deck. This man had Executioner, he had NATO, he had Ice Spirit, and he had Zap. He had so many different air defenses, and it didn't matter. All right, guys, we got another game against Fab. Fab Ricos. All right, man. Saucing out the good luck. And we have a pretty decent hand. I really like having Giant in my opening hand. So he dropped them. He dropped Bats in the back. That's not very intimidating. He might pair it with a Hog Rider. So he actually goes same lane as our Night Witch. What is this man doing? All right, that was a really special play. I definitely would not advise anyone to go the same lane as where my Night Witch is. Really am confused why he didn't go where more of the bats were in. It just was an odd play by him in general. We're just gonna fireball that and we're just gonna wait for the last possible second. So maybe he'll group up some more things along with those muskies. So now we're going to go in for the fireball. Those muskies will not even get a single hit on the tower. We were really wanting him to drop an ice spirit or something else, but he was so dedicated in the left-hand lane. Despite him being so dedicated in the left-hand lane, it didn't really pan out for him, and he actually ended up taking a critical amount of damage there. We're going to be dropping a bandit to finish off that musketeer. We can kind of just ignore that miner, because that miner is going to do 500 damage, but 500 damage in the grand scheme of things really isn't too much. We're going to go for a Minion Horde and Miner combination right now because we really want to save everything else. And he actually likes to go in for a Zap, but the Zap is not going to do anything. We went in for our own Zap. It really wasn't necessary. We still had so many minions left over. And he dropped the bats right on top opposed to dropping them off to the side. So it was more so just a re knee-jerk reaction from me. And I really just should have held on to the Zap as you guys can see right there. There was no, there was no need for that Zap. 
if he had dropped it a little bit further off to the side, and then uh, I expected him to drop the bats a little bit further off to the side. If he had done that and waited for those minions to target the tower, maybe it would have been a different scenario because then these bats would have gotten close up and they would have been able to pick off my minions. So I just kind of expected him to do the right placement and he didn't. So that was, uh, I wasn't able to identify that in time, unfortunately. I could fireball all that. I'm not going to though. I'm just going to save that for the three muskies. And the three muskies are coming down right there. We're going in for the fireball. Those bats should pop and end up doing so much damage to those muskies. My giant, aka my Santa Claus, is coming in hot. We're going to, going to get a zap. We clipped a few of the bats, but not all of them. Still looking pretty clean for us at the moment. This deck just destroys three musketeers right now. Like, if you guys are noticing how easy this matchup is, he's barely touching my tower at all. We're going to be able to get another Night Witch on the field, so then the bandit, after it kills the Santa Claus, aka the giant, it will dash towards my uh, Night Witch. My Night Witch will be pretty beefy. Won't end up dying in that situation. So he can drop his three muskies, but we can just go for a fireball. You always want to go for the fireball and zap in conjunction with each other. When the muskies are all together, takes them out immediately, and then you don't have to respond to it. And it does tank for the one HP musketeers that are actually fireballed. So if they don't have that luxury, then they're doing a negative three elixir trade every single time that happens. When you fireball zap three musketeers, not only are you netting a positive three elixir trade in that interaction, you are also taking away their primary way of facilitating a push. Three Musketeers is what they use to split push, and it is also something that they use to convert defense into offense. So in doing so, you pretty much tear apart their entire premise of their deck, and the deck really isn't able to function the way it's supposed to. Alright guys, let's move on to the next game, and let's keep asserting some dominance. Alright guys, we got Harry from Orange Shoes. Harry TM with the all caps. He's shouting his name. He's exclaiming, wow! He's giving the thumbs up. We're responding with a thumbs up, and a good luck to the kind sir. And we don't really have the best hand, so we're just going to wait and see what Harry does. We're going to be dropping a minion horde in the same lane as his bandit. He's going to drop out a poison. So this is looking like a P.E.K.K.A. deck or a Mega Knight deck for sure. We're going to be zapping that to make sure the bats don't do too much work. We ended up missing a bat. That's pretty unexcusable in this situation. Shouldn't have missed that, but it's okay. One bat isn't going to be too detrimental to us at all. That interaction really wouldn't have changed much. So we're going to be dropping a bandit. We're also going to be dropping minions because my bandit is going to be going back towards that miner. That was well played out of him, but we caught that and we didn't allow that Electro Wizard to connect with our tower. So we're going to see what he responds with. He's going to respond with his own bandit. I do have to respond to that. Unfortunately, that would get a hit on my tower and we're really not about that life. If he has zap, we're going to be in a bad situation. So I just netted a negative three trade right there. Uh, not really liking that, but I did save my tower from a bandit hit. So it, I guess it was kind of worth it. All right, so I'm kind of not really, I'm very, yeah, I was very reluctant to sauce out a P.E.K.K.A. Or to sauce out a Giant because I knew that he had P.E.K.K.A. in that situation or a Mega Knight. He still got, what, Inferno Dragon and P.E.K.K.A.? Sir, you have to be kidding me. That is not a deck. Harry, why are you doing me dirty like this? I thought we were friends, Harry. I thought we were comrades. thought we were saucing out the wows and the uh, thumbs up together early on, but apparently... Apparently, Harry had different thoughts, guys. Harry is a savage. So we're going to be dropping the minion horde because we were going to lose that tower. we got to make sure that the, the Inferno Dragon does not lock on our tower. I really did not expect him to be running Inferno Dragon and P.E.K.K.A. I feel like that's very bad deck construction, but I guess it is a counter deck, and uh, there's nothing I really can do about it. Usually, you only need Inferno Dragon if you're actually going to be running a Mega Knight variation because it's not as good against tanks. Definitely going to be fireballing that. So my bandit will end up actually getting a hit on the tower if he doesn't respond to it. We're going to be going in for a miner right now. That miner will kill the tower if he doesn't respond to it as well. He's dropping his own miner and he messes up the prediction, guys. We are very much still in this game. We're going to go in for a minion horde. And then he goes in for electro and a zap. Okay. All right, we see you, Harry. But Harry, that's not going to do as much as you want, dude. Guys, we're still in this game. I mean, the miner is not very scary at all. However, that pack... Oh, man. All right. Rip. <laughs> I thought we were still in the game, but alas, guys, we got wrecked. All right, guys. So that's actually where I'm going to end the video for today. Make sure to let me know down below what you guys think about this deck and how it ends up working for you. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Peace out, guys. <laughs>